Hi and welcome back to my channel. I thought I would bring up my 2024 reading spreadsheet and it's on, I use Google Sheets. You can use this spreadsheet and Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. I'm just using Google Sheets and you see it's called Robin's 2024 reading spreadsheet which is the first spreadsheet here and if I scroll down here um, where I, I'm holding the screen down a little that's the 2024 reading spreadsheet that came from the creator. But once I brought it over to my iPad, what I did was simply renamed it so that I could edit it. So I'm going to open it and we're going to go page by page. We'll start off with the sheets, okay? The sheets included our credits, get started, categories, acquisitions, book survey, Gantt, summary, charts, more stuff, series, new releases, short story tracker, and other spreadsheets. So let's look at each one. So we're going to go to credits, and I will link this in the description box below. This spreadsheet was created by Brock Roberts, and he had some collaborators and contributors, and they're listed here, okay? April Sarah, I, I used to go to her stream, so she's even here. So he created this spreadsheet. So once you copy over the spreadsheet to your device, whether it is Android or Apple, then you rename it and then you can edit it to your delight. The next page, get started. How did I use this get started page? The way that I use this get started page is I set a reading goal of 400 books with a monthly reading goal at a minimum of 30, which technically would not bring me to 400, but that's the way that I set it. TBR pile, I don't fill that in because it's just ridiculously large. Monthly budget, I don't use because I generally don't purchase books. It's a very rare thing for me to purchase a book. Library card fee, I have no library card fees. Audible, yes, I do have the $14.95 plan, so let's just fill that in. And Scribd, I have that, and that's $9.99. So that is my the two services that I will be using. So I will have a subscription budget of $24.94 each month. Libro FM, I usually get those free. Downpour, I don't use. Others, I don't use. So that is the page that, let me hit the, I just want to save it. That is the page for getting started, okay? Okay, so now we're going to look at the categories page. First, I'm going to shrink it down a little bit so that you can see the whole categories, okay? The categories are gender, age group, genre, format, publisher, acquired, newly used, location, series, country, shelf, excuse me, length, protagonist, diversity, and language. Okay. Now, what I use on this page, and what I'll do is every time I want to show you something, I will highlight it in yellow, and then I will remove the highlight. For genre, we have the categories, and I will let me enlarge in it for you. The categories and genre are fiction, nonfiction, science fiction, fantasy, horror, thriller, new weird, poetry, and mystery, and thrillers. Okay, that's all that was there. But I also added in romance, cozy mystery, women's fiction, historical fiction, and I could even add more. So if I remove that highlight, if I wanted to add memoirs, Now I just added another genre to that category and I can and and I could add as many as I need to. Then we have format. Let's highlight format for you. For format you have hardcover, trade paperback, mass market, ebook, audio, uncorrected proof, graphic novel or short story. What I use this as a difference between ebook, audio, and uncorrected proof, since those are the three main formats that I use. And what I'm going to do is keep the word format uh, 
so that you can see what category I'm in, is I basically read uncorrected proofs. I get a lot of audio books from my library and I occasionally get Kindle eBooks from Kindle Unlimited. So those will be the three main formats that I will personally be using. But I'm currently reading a book called, um, oh, why can't I think of the name of it? Brown Sugar by Donald Bogle, which is a hardcover book. So that category is there under format. So let's get rid of that. The next is Publisher. And again, I'm just going to highlight them as I talk about them. This came with some publishers included. Penguin Random House, Hachette, HarperCollins, Macmillan, Simon & Schuster. It stopped there. I've added Bookature, William Morrow, St. Martin's Press, Minotaur, Penguin Classics, and DeCapo Press. I will be adding to this all throughout the year. And I can go all the way down to this blue line. Okay? So there's all these publishers that I can add. And believe me, like I like let's go ahead and get rid of the highlight. I know that sometimes I have Harlequin. Okay. Um I might have Avon. I'm just thinking of a couple of publishers. I will have Kensington. So what you just saw me add, I'm highlighting. I just added in three publishers that I know I will be reading something by them during the month of, excuse me, during 2024. I can just continually add. But we're going to get rid of that highlight. So that just shows you how I can add the publisher. How did I get the book? Notice that there's only three spaces left. Let's highlight this whole thing right here. We're going to highlight it to right here. For acquired, you really only have so many ways you can get a book, right? You purchase it, it's given to you, you got it free, you got an ARC, an advanced reader copy, you got it from your library, or you already had it on your bookshelf. And if there's any other method of you getting books, you have three more options to put there, but that's usually plenty. So we'll get rid of that highlight. Now, how are you acquiring these books? new used or library this is important for me because 99 percent of what i read will be new though on that rare occasion i have a used book this brown sugar book by donald bogle that i got from thriftbooks.com and then library but that can go all the way down you can just keep going but usually that's plenty for me new used and library so I'm going to remove that highlight. Location basically is, I don't know, I think this is a mistake. I I think this should be up there, but I am not going to move it. It's either, is it on your shelf or did you get it from the publisher? Um, and so I will be using mostly publisher, but I do have some books on my shelf that I will be reading. And then if we go to series... There is a series tab here under categories. Started, ongoing, complete, DNF or do not finish, standalone or caught up. And I'll show you what that is all about in a, in a little bit. Where are your books located? What what excuse me, what countries are your books based in? United States, Canada, UK, Australia, France or China. Now, Let's say, for example, Granada or Central America. You can add to this if you need to. Now here, there's only room for one more because it's pretty much all-inclusive. What category is this? This is length. Novel, novella, anthology, short story, omnibus, novelette, graphic trade, screenplay, or poetry. That's usually plenty, and that's why Brock did not allow for additional categories to uh, items to be added to that category unless you want to use the word other. If for some reason the books you were reading did not quantify, you can call them other, and I'll just highlight that really quickly. So other is a choice if it doesn't fit any of those. Then you have your protagonists. 
This is important if you want to have really detailed charts later in the year. Is your protagonist male or is your protagonist female? Or do you have a list, a group of characters that create an ensemble male and female? Okay. Then you have diversity. Like, for example, three of the books that I just read would fit under BIPOC or own voices. So he, I think I will probably use BIPOC, and I'll show you that in a minute because I have not added that to my spreadsheet. So, and I'm sorry, I forgot to highlight this for you. The diversity is LGBTQIA, mental illness, disability, combo, author only, chronic illness, none, own voices, hashtag own voices, BIPOC, or gender. And like I said, I, I did read some books that fit under BIPOC, and I will show you that in a moment. Language. I, I, I'll show you all of them, but for me, this is pretty self-explanatory. I just stick with English because I only read English. It's pretty self-explanatory. Returned, yes or no, like if I got them from my library, which I did get three books from my library, so I can use that category. Physical or digital, what format am I reading? Am I reading a print book or am I reading a digital book? And then my ratings. How are you going to rate these books? And you have ha zero to five stars with half star ratings. Zero, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, etc. In 2023, I only used solid numbers. It was either a four or a five. I did not use any half stars. But if you choose to use half stars, there you go. Now, what's the status of the books? And, I, and I'll show you where the status is important. Okay, what is your status? Are you reading it? Are you rereading it? Is it a DNF? Are you currently reading it? And have you returned it to your library unread? Now, I love this one. This is, I think, a pretty much a new category. Because I don't remember this, but this is... Reviewed, yes, no, or planned. I cannot wait to fill that in. That is great. And I'll show you that in a moment too. Earth. Why is this Earth known maybe here? Because you might have a paranormal book. You may have a fantasy book or a science fiction book. That's what that's for. TBR. I'm not using the TBR because of the way that I set in my uh, new releases. I'm, I'm doing that differently, so I didn't use... TBR. And that's it. But it could go on as you see this more spaces to the right. So those are all the different categories that Brock has included in this spreadsheet that are at your disposal to compile the library that you have. And in some cases, I will show you my 2023 books compared to my 2024 one that is just getting started. So we've looked at credits. We've looked at get started. Categories is checked because that's the one we just looked at. And then acquisitions. I never use this acquisitions page because I rarely purchase books. Most of my books are NetGalley ARCs, advanced reader copies, or library books. So I don't usually use that one. Sorry, I didn't mean to close out the spreadsheet. Then we have book survey. This is to me the most important part of the entire spreadsheet. This is where you track everything. And there are some things that I can add to this and you can see it in real time. Currently it is January 5th. Okay. I just highlight that so you can see what I'm talking about. It's currently January 5th. And as of today, January 5th, I have read two books. Those are the two books I have read today. But I also finished a book today. This is the book that I finished today. But I started it yesterday. So when you look at this in, an, in its entirety, you can see that I started a book on January 1st. I finished it on January 3rd. I started another book on January 3rd, which I finished on that same day. I started a book yesterday the 4th, and I finished it today the 5th. And then I read two books in their entirety today. Okay, now read... Or reread when you when you tap this, you should have a list of items. I don't know why it's not coming up, but it would be re read currently reading did not finish. Th those would come under that category, and I apologize for it not coming up. 
I'm just not sure why it's not coming up. G we have the gender, which all my characters have been mainly female. My protect, protect, uh, my authors, I'm sorry, my gender is authors. These are my authors, and they've all been female so far. But down here, these three right here. Actually, let me just show you like this. Brown sugar and the Kanamani crystal are male. Oh, I don't know. There's a. It should show me the categories. So, brown sugar is written by a, a male author, but the protagonists are female. The women is a female author, and the protagonists are female. The Kanamani crystal is male, and I'm pretty sure the cat the character or the protagonist is male so I highlighted that as well so I just want to get rid of these highlights and get rid of these highlights because I don't need that and then we talked about the protagonist translator is something that I don't usually run across I don't usually read any translated books age group again this this is not coming up clear and oh there we go are they adult, YA, middle gray, or kids? Mostly I read adult books. What are the genres? So far, the books that I have read in January are one mystery thrillers, one historical fiction, and three cozy mysteries. The length. The length could be novel, novella, anthology, short story, omnibus, or novelette. But the five books that I've read so far this month, they have been full-length novels. The next category, Uncorrected Proof. Why do I have that? Because these are all galleys. These are all advanced reader copies. But I have other choices. Hardcover, my Donald Bogle book. You hear me knocking on it. That's a hardcover book. Trade paperback, mass market, ebook, audio, uncorrected proof, graphic novel, or short story. Thus far, I've just read uncorrected proof. But if I get rid of that highlight and I show you brown sugar down here, and the reason I have these down here is because I'm not going to read them from cover to cover in one sitting. I am going to read them over the course of the month. So for brown sugar, for example, it's a novel, but it's a hardcover novel. The women by um, Kristen Hanna is, let's highlight that, it's a novel, but it's, I got it as an audio book arc, an audio book arc from NetGalley. So you see uncorrected proof. Let's get rid of that, those highlights. So you can see the different formats that, that I have listed for some of the books that either I have already read this month or will be reading this month. This has to be fleshed out. I just started uh, filling this in last night, so it's pretty, pretty bare. Narrator. Um, the Women. These two books, The Women and The Count of Monte Cristo. These books, let's shrink that a little bit so you can see it. These books are audio books, so for audio, let me just put him there. I will jot down the narrator's names once I find them. For the women, that audio book is 15 hours, but the audio book for the Count of Monte Cristo is 57 hours. Okay, Brown Sugar is a hardcover, so I'm not filling that in. So let's get rid of that highlight because we don't need it. Physical and digital. How are these books coming to my hands? Are they in digital format or physical format? Mostly digital, as you can see here. And again, I'm highlighting it. But you see that Donald Bogle uh, book is a physical copy. So therefore, it says physical. Okay. Then you put the number of pages because this creates a, uh, graphs and charts. So for record keeping purposes, you need to track your pages. These are the pages of the books that I have read thus far. Again, highlighting. Those are the pages of the books I read thus far. Other books like these two, The Keeper of the Irish Secret and Face of Fear. I haven't looked them up yet, so I don't know how many pages. 
but for these three books here I'll just highlight that Brown Sugar is 288 pages. The Women by Kristen Hanna is 480 pages. The Count of Monte Cristo from Alex, by Alex Sumas is 1,276 pages. So that's where you record your pages. So get rid of that. And then the publication year. Notice I have two books here that came out this year. But then I have three books that I just read that came out last year. See that? 2023 versus 2024. And then if we jump down to here to Brown Sugar, The Women, and The Count of Monte Cristo, let's look at those dates. I see Brown Sugar came out in 1980. The Women comes out in 2024, but The Count of Monte Cristo came out in 1844. So that I'll show you the purpose of those numbers in a little bit. Then here under Publisher, Remembering Categories, I said there's different publishers. The publishers that I've read thus far for this month have been One Bookature, One William Morrow, two, and Three Minotaur. Those are the publishers I have read thus far this month. Are the publishers that I'll be reading this month? I, right here. De Capo Press, St. Martin's Press, Penguin Classics. I'll be reading books from those publishers. How am I getting these books? Am I getting advanced reader copies? Am I buying them or libraries? So let's highlight the whole thing for right now. You could tell the first five books I have read as ARCs. Two other books I have here that I'll be reading are ARCs. When we get down to Brown Sugar, I purchased that book. The Women is an ARC. And then the library is where I got the Count of Monte Cristo from. So that is how I acquire the books that I will be reading. Where am I getting these books in the condition or what condition are they? Let's let's highlight that and take a look at that. You have new for all of these ARCs, right? These A ARCs are also new. But Brown Sugar, I purchased it used from thriftbooks.com. The Women is an ARC and it's new. And then the Count of Monte Cristo is a library book. So library is acquired and it, whether it's new or used, it comes from the library. Get rid of those highlights. And then the status of are these individual books, are they series books? Are they connected books? Are they ongoing books? And what am I talking about? I'm talking about this right here. The Sleeping Girls was part of an ongoing series and it was book number nine. Can't We Be Friends, and that is a book about Marilyn Monroe and Ella Fitzgerald, that is a standalone against the current Hado Homicide and Coconut Drop Dead. Notice that I have one, two, and three right here. You see that? I just highlight that. One, two, and three against the current. I started a series. Hado Homicide is ongoing. Coconut Drop Dead, it's ongoing. And as I get more books in that series, then I'll fill that out if those any of those come up in 2024. Diversity. Now, usually you can say none, right? Because most of my books don't have a lot of diversity. But guess what? Can't We Be Friends had Ella Fitzgerald. So I'm going to put Own Voices. Against the Color. Uh, against the Current. And the next two, BIPOC. Okay? So that's my diversity for this month. Sleeping Girls, there was no diversity. Can't We Be Friends was. Against the current high do, do, hard do homicide and coconut drop dead, they were. Then you have the location of the books. United Kingdom, Sleeping Girls took place there. But the next four books I read took place here in the U.S., then you have language, which is always English for me. I don't read any other language. So usually, I, I um, that was a mistake. Usually what I just do is I just do a lot of cutting and pasting right here because quite naturally, everything I read is in English. If it was a translation, I could put that there. If it's a readathon or buddy read, I can put that there. Now notice over here, the kind of Monte Cristo. Let me... um bring this over here really quickly 
So you see, buddy, I have a check mark. I'll highlight that again. I'm I'm I I'm going to be reading the Kanamani Crystal with a group called Doorstoppers Are Us. We read tomes, huge books that are a thousand pages or more. So that's why I have Buddy Read checked for that. So I'm going to remove that highlighter. TBR, like I said, I'm not really filling that in. I'm putting that information in another sheet. And then how long it takes me to read each book. The Sleeping Girls was three days. I don't know why this didn't mark me. For Can't We Be Friends, I read it in one day. So for some reason, I don't know why it didn't do that. But let's just stick it there. So can't so Sleeping Girls, I read that over the course of three days. Can't We Be Friends, I read one day against the current two days. Today, I read Hard Dough, Homicide, and Coconut Drop Dead one day. Again, I don't know why that particular one was blank. And that's it for book survey. This is your most important sheet in this entire reading spreadsheet. If you are into data collecting and record keeping when it comes to the books that you read. Okay, so let's go on. Gant. I honestly don't know what that is. I, I really don't. It does some kind of tracking, but there's errors and I have to check with the creator of this spreadsheet. But it does list three of the books here. But again, I, that that is there's two parts of this spreadsheet that I don't get. Gantt is one of them. Summary is a great, great sheet. Now, I'm going to just shrink the screen for just one moment. Just so that you can gaze on all the different things on this page. And now I'm going to expand the screen so you can see some of the things. Okay, when we get down to right here. Right here, let's highlight that. So far I have read one mystery thriller, three cozy mysteries, and one historical fiction. I'm going to be reading hundreds of books this year and this is going to populate based on the genre that I'm reading like for example when I read uh, The Count of Monte Cristo that's going to be historical fiction when I read say uh, a Helen Pfeiffer book that will be mystery thrillers if I have any romance like I have some Amish fiction that would come under there so that is something from book survey okay First, let me take this highlight off. I'll show you what I mean. Anything from over here, on this page here, and I have no idea why I didn't remove that highlight, so let's get rid of that highlight. Anything that's recorded on this book survey page, and it's down there at the bottom. Okay, you see book survey, how it popped up. Anything on that page gets translated and calculated in automatically tabulated on the summary page. How is it? Here I showed you genre. I read one mystery thriller, three cozies, and one historical fiction. But under pages, we we see some things here. We'll just, I'll just highlight from the areas that I have. So far for this year, I have read 402 pages that are of mystery thrillers. In total, I have read 896 cozy mystery pages, and in total, I have read 384 historical fiction pages. This will grow. In fact, let's just pop over to my 2023 spreadsheet so you can see what I mean. If we go to summary, and we go to here, okay, this is 2023. For fiction, I read 614 pages. Nonfiction, 1602. Let's jump down to Cozy Mysteries. 14,980 pages I read of Cozy Mysteries. Mystery Thrillers, the most commonly read book for me, was 66,981 pages. For Women's Fiction, I read a lot of that. 11,158. So when you look at the 2024 spreadsheet, this will populate as I add each book on that book survey page. 
Remember that book survey page is your most critical page as far as everything translating over to summary and when I show you charts. And then my format so far this year, we'll just highlight the whole thing here. Hardcover, I haven't read any hardcovers yet, no trade paperbacks, etc. But I have read five uncorrected proofs and you can see that right there, five. So we'll get rid of that highlight. And I have completed the five books that I have read. So that is currently at 100%. And that means that I have completed the five books in that format thus far. Um, acquisition, as I mentioned, I don't usually buy books. So I'm leaving that blank. I'm leaving a uh, acquisition format blank. Length, I'm not using any of this because I don't shop at, say, Barnes & Noble or Amazon for books. I get my books from NetGalley at no cost for review purposes. When we come down here, it's going to start tabulating the number of books I have read over the course of the year. And I am going to temporarily put it yellow for highlighting purposes. I have read five. Uh, Rereads should be one because I did read against the current already, so I have to fix that. I haven't DNF'd any books. I'm not currently reading any books. I haven't returned any books to the library unread. I have not yet read any physical books, and this is what I'm reading right here. And I have read five digital books, so we'll get rid of that highlight. Hours of reading. I don't really, really track this at all. I think this is where Gantt comes into place. This one right here. And again, I don't fully get Gantt. So I, I don't usually pay any attention to this part of the summary page. And let's see. Anything else? Okay, I can show you this. Books per month. Let's, let's take a quick look at 2023. Now, I'm going to confess to you right now. I have not finished off tabulating December. Okay, but if we look at 2023, oh, it looks like I did finish. Oh, I didn't. Okay, we're just going to fix 2023. I know what the problem is. I did finish December. So what I'm going to do is for pages, I put pages in two columns because I like pages to be where I can see them right next to the books themselves. So I'm just fixing that. So therefore, if I go over to the summary in 2023, now it has tab, I just didn't have that tabulated. That was just my mistake. So when we look at 2023 books per month, we're going to highlight that whole thing for you. Let's highlight it. For January, uh, let's take that off. And give me a moment. Okay, so for books per month for 2023 now. 48 books in January, 35 in February. I'll make it bigger. See that? 51 in March, 43 in April, 51 in May. 44 in June, 45 in July, when I fell down the rabbit hole, only 14 in August, 22 in September, 26 in October, hardly any in November and December. So I averaged 33 books a month for the year. So it's not a bad number. It's just not the number that I'm used to reading. This also, remember that pages where you put the list the number of pages? Because it lists the number of pages... When you tabulate over the course of the year, it tells you how many pages, let's make this bigger, how many pages per month I read for each month, what the grand total was, and what the average was. So I averaged 10,908 pages a month over the course of a year, of the year, last year. Okay, pages per day. It even breaks it down to here. And this is a very good chart right here. In January, let's bring this so you can see. In January, I read 497 pages a day, but down to December, I only read 93 pages a day. Or in November, 78 pages a day. So this average gets really screwed up for me 
because I read far less in November and December than I generally do. But that's good to have because it's a good reference for what I'm going to do um, in 2024. So going back to the 2024 reading spreadsheet, and this is where I was at. I was right here just now in 2023. But since we're only in January, I've read 1,682 pages so far this month. It's got a weird tabulation of averaging 140 pages a day. But really, if we ask Siri, what is 100? Excuse me, Siri, what is 1682 divided by 5? 1,682 divided by 5 is 336.4. So since I have currently read five books, my true average is 336. This is averaging over the 31 days for the month of January. But that will get fleshed out once I start filling in for each month. And again, we're just at the beginning of January. So that that that's very hard to, to really smooth out like for example pages a day 54 days per book six that's going to flesh out more as i read each day and each week and as i tabulate each month and maybe i'll come back at the end of january and show you what it looks like i love this here because years published now notice that i am going to have that alex Dumas book, the uh, Count of Monte Cristo, so it's going to be less than 20, so I have one book there, but most of my books take place in 2025, excuse me, 2025, 2024, with a few taking place in 2023, and I'll show you what those are. And the reason that there's eight when I've only read five books is I've listed other books there because I started filling it in last night and I've got a lot more filling in to do so those are the years that I have read so far now it's going to show the Count of Monte Cristo as the longest book I have read and then it shows Coconut Drop Dead as the shortest book I've read Brown Sugar w is going to be end up being shorter than Coconut Drop Dead but I have not read Brown Sugar yet so it's just kind of waiting. It's like in the wings. And uh, get rid of that highlight. And that's basically all that's on the summary. summary. Oh, I, I need to show you this. The reading challenge goal. I set my reading challenge goal. I'm going to make this bigger. I set my reading challenge goal to 400. Okay. Of that 400, I've read five. You see that right here? The blue square is going across there and the blue square. So of that 400, I've read five. In order to stay on tap to read 400 books by the end of the year, I have to match these numbers. I have to read at least 33 books in January if I'm going to be on time. I have to read up to 67 books in February if I'm going to be on time. So this this reading challenge goal section is very important, but you won't really see that figured out until the year goes on. So like if we jump down to 2023, you see here this everything is moved over. It says zero cuz I don't need anything. Let me highlight that. I read 48 for that month, 83 for that month, 134. So I got to 396 of my goal. So that, like I said, will be populated as we get to um, more books as we read, as I read each day, each week, and each month. TBR progress. I I'm not really dealing with TBR because I'm I I'm doing something different. Then there's a whole series section, and that's right here. I love this one. And I don't usually use Brock's series page, but I'm going to be using it in 2024. So I started one series. I have three that are ongoing series. I have not completed any series, and I have not stopped reading any series. 
and I'll show you what I'm doing there. Now here, I, I'm not quite sure a series backlog. This isn't this is in progress, so I haven't finished filling in that, and I'll show you why in a minute. That's incomplete data, but there's a cool reason for that. If I go over here to series I am reading, this is a spreadsheet that I built. I have series that I'm reading. For 2023, these were the books that I had lined up. So now that it's 2024, I need to cull titles from here and move them over to Brock's spreadsheet. But again, I just really started working on this last night. So therefore, I haven't been able to, to translate that. But this is my spreadsheet. I started it in 2021, then 2022, then last year. And I won't create a 2024 spreadsheet in here because I'm using Brock's. And I'll show you that in just a moment. But I just wanted to show you that really quickly. So right here, this, this part here that I'm going to highlight, I haven't filled that in, but I, I need to go get that data from my other spreadsheet. So I will be doing that. I just haven't, like I said, Rome wasn't built in a day that was just started last night. And the ratings. I haven't rated any books. So let's go do that really quickly. Let's go back to book survey. And let me rate these books. And then you can see that filled in. Sleeping Girls, Okay, so some of these uh, drop-down screens aren't there, so I'm just going to put... I just have to do it manually for right now. So, for rating... Um, hopefully, I can fill this in. Something's wrong with the spreadsheet. Okay. I'm just going to rate everything a 4 for right now. I may change... Something to a five. Oh, I know what I can change to a five. Can't we be friends? It's definitely five stars. Okay, so there's my rating. So I had not filled that in. And again, for the third time, I think I've said this. I just started populating this last night. So if we go back to summary, now rating shows you what I've done. One book I've read this month. I have rated five stars in four books I have read this month. I have rated four stars. That's all that was. I was just cleaning that up. Protagonist genre, gender, I mentioned male, female, or ensemble. Author gen, uh, gender, is it male or female author? Both unknown or, I'm not sure what NB is. Oh, non-binary. Okay, and then we have the publisher imprint. We have the country that the author is from or the location of the book, what language it's in, and that's pretty much, I think that's it. Is there anything? Oh, diversity. Remember we talked, I talked a little bit about diversity for the books that I've read. So far I have read one that is non-diverse related one that's own voices, that's the Marilyn Monroe, Ella Fitzgerald, and then three that are BIPOC. And for some reason, that's coming up blank, but we'll fix that. I don't want to fix it now, but I'll fix that later. Okay, now, that's all under the summary tab. Again, anything that you get on the summary tab, summary, as you can see, comes from all data that you import into book survey. So once you have book survey, you have all that summary stuff. But then you also have charts. Now this always gives an error because I'm on my iPad. All that data that I just showed you that I kept highlighting here and highlighting there and highlighting this, highlighting that, all that data can be converted into charts. Whether you want pie charts, you want graphs, you want grids, you want squiggly lines, it doesn't matter. Like, say, for example, I look at how many different ways you can have charts. I'm not even going to highlight anything, but you can have bar, area, um, line, column, pie. So whichever way you want to look at your data is how you can have it. So 
this will automatically be tabulated based on what you put on your book survey sheet. As you grow that book survey sheet, whether you read 20 books a year or 400 books a year, as you grow that book survey sheet, these charts and graphs and grids will be filled in. And so the summary and the charts all depend on what you put in book survey. Okay? More stuff is going to track my publishers. Three Minotaur, two William Morrow, two Booker Chua, one St. Martin's, one Penguin, and one DeCapo. So we're going to see how many different publishers I read throughout the year. Series. Remember I said I was going to use Brock's series spreadsheet instead of my own? Well, in order for me to do that, I will go back to the series spreadsheet that I created back in 2021 and bring in any books that I plan on reading in 2024. But I have to build that and it's not built yet. But it will go on this page under series. See, series. I, like I said, I haven't built this yet. New releases. I did something very different this time. I went to NetGalley and I went back to December of 2023 and I copied over the different books for each month. So the way that I plan on getting my reading caught up because I'm really behind in my reading, I will read whatever December books and these are the December books, obviously. Okay. So I will read whatever December books are right here. Okay. And then when I finish those, I rush over here and I will read whoop, these January books. Okay. My plan of action is once I finish those, I will read. Oh, those were January. Yeah, January. I only have a couple for February over here. Once I get through those, I go to March and so forth and so on until I catch up on my backlog. Want to see my backlog? Just until December 2022, not before. These are all the books that I plan on reading during 2024. I'm just going to keep scrolling so you can see that all this I imported from NetGalley, and these are the books that I'll be reading during this year. But there are going to be more books, and I'll tell you why in just a moment once we get down to the bottom of this. I'm just going, and that way if you want to freeze the screen or slow down the video, you can see what titles, but I've got them listed by month chronologically, and there they all are. It comes up to 320 books. My goal is 400, so there's another 80 books I could ostensibly read. What would those 80 books be? Future books I get from NetGalley for sure. But also, the series that I am reading, this spreadsheet here, we'll just use this one. This Kate Carlisle series, The Bibliophile Mystery. Let's, let's just highlight this so you can see what I'm talking about. In her Bibliophile Mystery Series, I have read up to book number eight. I don't know why these aren't. Let me just cross these out so that you can see what I've done. Okay, so I have read the first eight, but I still have nine through 15. I will be taking this. Now I'm going to get rid of the highlight. Let me show you what I'm going to do because this is kind of cool. Because I'm going to merge my data with Brock's data. Okay. I will take these five books or six books. Seven, I can't count. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take these books here. This is the bibliophile mystery from Kate Carlisle, right? That's just an example as to what I plan on doing with Brock's series. Okay. So for Brock's series, I plan, okay, 
So, the Kate Carlisle books, right? Those are the Kate Carlisle books that I plan on reading during 2024. I need to stretch out that line, but we won't do that. So what I would do simply is I would put her name, Kate. Oh, goodness. Kate Carlisle. And I, I can't remember, but I think it's, oh, it's the Bibliophile uh, series. Okay. And I remember that this is book number nine. So I'll put this to nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So these are some of the other books that I will be reading during 2024. Those remaining books in the Bibliophile series by Kate Carlisle. So as I said, I have never used Brock's series page on his spreadsheet. So I will be getting my data that I have personally collected and putting it over there. Like, for example, let's see. Okay, here's a good one right here. The Meg Lanslow series, right? I have not read any of those. So I will be putting this into Brock's spreadsheet because I do plan on reading those. I'm just going to stick them down here for right now. I do plan on reading those during 2024. And any that I don't finish in 2024, I just move over to 2025. So I'm just showing you this to show you that you can really, really, really personalize this spreadsheet that Brock created very, very simply. I personally am a series fanatic, a diehard series fanatic. Because I am a series fanatic, what you are seeing on this page that I have to build will incorporate series that I plan on following as we get into 2024. I can tell you another series that I'm, I'm into. Um, let me find her. Well, some of these I've, I'm, I've read all of them. Let me look at 2023. I'll show you something that I... Uh, da, 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 da. Janet Ivanovich. Okay. So the Stephanie Plum series right here, I'm going to make it big. Okay, I, I remember finishing, uh, I'm going to get rid of that. I did read Sizzling 16 recently. So for the Stephanie Plum series, I still have 17 through 29. And I believe there's a book number 30 now. So I will take these books right here, 17 through 29, and any books after that and move them over to the other spreadsheet because I plan on reading those in 2024. So that is something that I am looking forward to really enjoying with, Spro with Brock's spreadsheet and what you see is his series page. And once I flush this out, once I fill this in, and it's going to be quite lengthy because I do read a lot once I'm back in the mood to read which I am now once this is filled out okay and I've done all the cleaning up and all the adding it's going to go back to that summary page and there's a spot for it somewhere where is that spot I have to locate it right here once I see how this number has jumped up to 109. That's because I just threw in those other books just now. So once I clean all of that up from my spreadsheet to Brock's, this, these numbers will change. And I love it. I love everything being in one spreadsheet instead of having Brock's 2024 reading spreadsheet, which is now Robin's 2024 reading spreadsheet, and my series, I can bring it right into here and it will translate into the summary page. In fact, it will also translate 
into um, charts like somewhere in here there's going to be a chart for series I just have to locate it I don't know where it is because again I just started this last night but somewhere in here in one of these grids or graphs or charts or pie charts or whatever have you is series so this is going to be filled in and flushed out and looking mighty pretty once I'm done and I'll probably work on it over the weekend and it will be caught up to date according to what I think I can accomplish in 2024. Um, something I want to show you really quickly is, let's see if I can find her. I might have to go to 2021. I'm looking for Leslie Meyer because I'm caught up with Leslie Meyer, but she has a book coming out in 2024. And I wanted to just show you Okay, so I don't, for some reason, I don't have her on here, which is weird, because I definitely read Le every Leslie Meyer book. Maybe I have her over here, but in, in any event, what I wanted to show you, but I can't, is if there's new books that come out, like this Carol Wire book, like I read A Soul for a Soul, so I'm going to cross that out. Once Carol Wire comes up with a new book in her Detective Kate Young series, it would be book six. If the private series by James Patterson came out with a new book, it would be book 17. If Kate Oliver came up with a new book, it would be book four and so forth and so on. So what I will be doing is I will be moving some of these titles over to Brock's spreadsheet and, and just to reiterate one more time I will be coming into the series page right here from my own spreadsheet and it's going to look beautiful in the graphs and the grids and the charts and the pie charts and so forth I'm very very happy with it and I already showed you my new oh I did yeah I showed you my new releases I did I think I scrolled through that the reading calculator which is not quite flushed out yet I have to add some more data and this will start to calculate how I'm actually reading every day so I think I have covered everything in Brock's spreadsheet which if you go to YouTube which I'm going to link in the description you're going to get a blank spreadsheet that says 2024 reading spreadsheet and what you do is you create a copy like I did and then you name it whatever you're going to name it. In my case, it's simply Robin's 2024 reading spreadsheet. But this is the best spreadsheet I have seen. Like I said, I think I've been using it at least since 2021, maybe even 2020. But I've been using it for a minute and I absolutely love it. I'm just scrolling back to try to see how, how long I've been using it. I have a lot of spreadsheets. I am a spreadsheet fanatic. Or you can even call me a spreadsheet queen. But that's it. I think I've covered everything. I think I've made everything clear. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, any links that I can provide for you in the description box below, I will give you. I will give you the link to Brock's spreadsheet because it's free and available to anyone. And if there's any more professional tutorials on Brock spreadsheet I will also link that I don't know if there is yet because it's it's we're only in January 5th so I don't know if they've made any videos but if there are any available videos I'll link those as well but I want to thank you so much for watching and have a pleasant day